This is the All Anal, All Anal, All Anal, All Anal Podcast with your host, Sebastian Starr. Sebastian Starr. With your host, Sebastian Starr. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the All Anal Podcast. I'm your host, Sebastian Starr, and today I am going to be diving in deep, deep, deep into the song Hurricane by Kanye West featuring The Weeknd and Lil Baby. Now, before I hit these lyrics, I have to say that this song completely caught me off guard. I was not ready for it. I have been hesitating on listening to the Donda album in general because I'm really waiting for my older brother to listen to it so we can do an episode on that together. But, you know, the way the world is set up, it's not always going to turn out the way that you hope it will. So you just got to just go with the flow. But I can say that when I heard this song, I was completely, I was unprepared. I was extremely unprepared. I was driving with my fiance. We were picking up something to eat. We had the radio playing, and it just came out of nowhere. And I said, what the hell is this song featuring The weekend that I don't know anything about? I had to Shazam it real quick, and I was like, oh, shit. This is off of Donda. I haven't heard Donda yet. I, and keep in mind, at this point, Donda's like, what, two months old? And I still haven't heard it. So, I, of course, the fan base has been talking about it, going crazy about it. The fans already knew that the song existed. I just haven't listened to it yet. With that being said, I also have not heard Moon featuring Kid Cudi from Donda, but I heard that song was great. So I might just buckle down and listen to the whole album and just do my own little partial review and then do a full review of my brother later. Whatever, whatever. But I got to I have to talk about this song because, once again, this nigga The weekend refuses to disappoint me lyrically, vocally, musically, I give it all to Kanye West. I'm going to give it all the music to Kanye West and all the other producers involved in making this album what it is, making the song what it is. But I have to say that I'm not disappointed. Like, he never disappoints. He does not disappoint me. I am never like, damn, that was trash. Never. I haven't heard it yet. And, of course, I've already said this before, you can have a favorite artist and admit when they do shitty songs, like, oh, that song wasn't as great. I'm not going to say that every single song that has this nigga on it is a bop, but this song right here is absolutely beautiful. So I just had to talk about it. I have to. It's the weekend. I have to talk about it. And I don't, and I'm trying so hard to maintain that borderline between crazy fan and like obsessive stalker I still don't have like this nigga's home address or personal telephone number email and nothing like that I'm not crazy but I will say that I am just obsessed with his music and he doesn't disappoint I'm not disappointed yet I have yet to hear a song that's like oh my god I can't believe I haven't heard it and until I hear it I'm going to keep talking about this man because he doesn't disappoint but overall, even if The weekend wasn't on it, the song itself is still great. So we're still going to talk about it. So let's talk about it, shall we? And I think <laughs> it threw me off because usually when The weekend is featured on a song, it's basically his song. You know, he does, and I've said this before. I've said this before. He does like the first verse, the chorus, the outro, the intro, and then whoever song it is only has like that one verse in the middle. This is not a similar kind of situation. He kind of does... His intro, his outro, and then a little bitty snippet in the middle. And then you got Lil Baby coming in with the first verse officially, and then Kanye West coming in with the second verse officially. So he really just does the chorus of the song, the chorus and the pre-chorus, but I digress. So let's dive into these lyrics, shall we? It starts off, and he, and and I'm sorry, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta say this. Kanye West has a infatuation with like harmonized choirs and acapellas. So the song plays off of this hum that resonates like the bottom chord of a piano when it's struck. And it just like sends off these waves of vibration. And it's so spiritual. And I noticed while I was reading the lyrics, I was reading the lyrics and listening to the song before I started recording, It's very heavily influenced by religion. If you read the lyrics, every time The weekend says you, the you is capitalized. And you learn in English literature and religious, whatever the hell you want to call it, that whenever you have a capitalized you, you're always referring to God or the higher power, right? 
So he's speaking to God or his higher power, you know, in a sense. So let's just get that out of the way. So he says, see this in 3D, all lights out for me, all lights out for me, lightning strikes the beach, 80 degrees, warm it up for me, finally free, found the God in me, and I want you to see I can walk on water, thousand miles from shore, I can float on the water, father, hold me close, don't let me drown, I know you won't. That... This is beyond any kind of poetry. <laughs> this is beyond any kind of poetry that I have ever heard in my life. I'm going to just go back a little bit. Well, let's just start from the tippity top. See this in 3D. All lights out for me. All lights out for me. Lightning strikes the beach. He's, setting, he's telling you where he is. He's seeing the world in its fullest, rawest, most genuine form. 3D is like cinematic excellence when you can see things and like reaching out. This is the reality though. The 3D is the reality. 3D, three dimensional. You know what I'm saying? He's seeing in different dimensions, right? 80 degrees, warm it up for me. Finally free. Found the God in me. It's not this narcissistic God complex, but just the realization that I have so much power within myself, more power than maybe I had realized before, more power than maybe other people realize around me, but I possess that. I possess that power. I possess that strength. I possess that energy, that gratitude, and I can do anything. Me, I can do anything. He says, I can walk on water. Thousands of miles from the shore, I can float on the water. I can do anything. You see what I'm saying? I, I am capable of anything because I possess this power within my being that nobody else can see. No, and everyone else refuses to see. Father, hold me close. Don't let me drown. I'm connecting to that being, that higher power in me. I'm connecting to that internally and externally. And I'm asking you for guidance, for influence, for inspiration. I'm asking you not to let me sink. I'm putting all of my faith in myself. And I need you to have that much faith in me as well. And don't let me fall to the bottom. I know you won't. You got me. I'm secure. I'm stable. I'm here. And that's a lot to unravel in just the course. <laughs> that's a lot to unravel in just the course of the song. But do you see what I mean? Do you see why I had to talk? Because that is, oh my God, he doesn't disappoint. He does not disappoint. I, well, let's keep going because I can talk about that for forever. So the first verse is Lil Baby. And this is the thing that I love about Lil Baby is he is very personal. Of course, he's like this hardcore, like thugged out type of guy. That's cool. That's fine. That's great. But he is very, very personal. He takes everything that he does musically very personally. He's always telling stories about his life, his upbringing, his come ups. And even in the midst of all of the fame and fortune, glitz and glamour, living the life and the lifestyle in the same voice with the same amount of energy, he'll talk about how people have betrayed him how he's lost loved ones, family, friends, acquaintances, just because, you know, envy, jealousy, you know, they, they hate what he has and they don't want to bask in the glory with him. They want it for themselves. Selfishness, greed. He, in, he deeply like dives into that part of his life all the time. And I can appreciate that because that's usually not an easy thing for people to talk about. People don't want to, you know, they don't want to dive too deep into their own personal problems. They definitely don't want to show people how vulnerable they are. And he does this quite frequently, and I can appreciate that. So he says, walking on the bridge, I threw my sins over the deep end. Sipping till my stomach hurt, this month I done lost three friends, right? Early morning, brainstorming. Normally, I can't sleep in. Sometimes I just want to restart. But it all depends. If I'm going to be the same young hungry nigga from the West End, wrote my hardest wrongs, and the crazy part, I have no pen. 
Maybach interior came with sheepskin. Still remember when I just had three bands. Now I'm the one everyone calls on because I got deep pants, as in deep pockets, as in he has a lot of money, just in case you didn't know. Bro told me the way to beat the game is on the defense and never phased by names that they might call me, but they gonna respect. And I feel like you better off trying to call. I might not get the message. She just tried to run off with my heart, but I blocked off the exit. So he, again, he's talking about his personal life. He's he's making it apparent. You know, I, I there was a point in my life where I had to just forgive myself. You know, the same way you go to a confessional and confess your sins to the preacher and they forgive you. I had to be that person for myself because no one else was going to do it for me. I had to let a lot of things go, even though people who I love, who I trusted, who I cared for, who I thought cared for me, you know, betrayed me in some way. I had to cut them off. You know, I have people in my life constantly trying to make me feel inferior when I know there's so much more to me than what they're trying to portray. That's why they're calling me these names. That's why they're trying to disrespect me. That's why they're trying to make me feel terrible about myself and my situation, even though the only thing I'm doing is trying to better my life for my family, for my friends, for my community. No one wants to let me do that. People want to take advantage of me. People want to take me for granted. You know, I had to struggle and fight and and survive just to get here. I had to go through so much pain and torment and torturous just to get here. I had to do all of that just to get here only for my fuckers to turn around the first chance they get and betray me. These people that I came up with, people that I love, and they've just turned their backs on me like it was nothing. And what else can I do besides keep going? I can't stop. There's so many points in my life where I just wanted to stop and start over, but I can't do that. It's never the right time. It's never the right circumstances. It's never the right, you know, I'm never in the right place at the right time. And it's devastating and it hurts and I hate it. But what else can I do besides keep pushing, keep grinding, keep moving forward, keep going, right? I fucks with Lil Baby because, again, he's a very personal guy. Everything he does is very intertwined with his personal struggles and traumas, and I really, really appreciate that because his delivery is always great. His delivery is always really, really great, and the stories that he tells behind everything is always, like, noteworthy. So let's get into the... Uh, the the second verse technically which is Kanye West's verse and I'm gonna I'm gonna just skip all the ad libs and go straight to lyrics now usually when you have a song featuring multiple people they all try to kind of stay on topic and so far you have the weekend who is like in tune with himself like he's done some really deep meditation and he's in tune with his inner power center and the higher power he's connected the two dots you know I am my own God and my God is me. We are all one. We are all connected. We are all in this single celled organism, universe, living in harmony, et cetera. And then you got little baby who is like, I know that I'm worth more than what they make me out to be. I know that I have this capability. I know that I'm able to do this. I know that I'm better than what they portray. Despite what they think or how they feel It's just some days it gets kind of hard because The people who I trust are usually the ones that take advantage of me. So those that's the consistency is discovering yourself and your self-worth, regardless of what anyone may say or how other people may think. And then you got Kanye West, (laughs) which it's pretty personal. It's still very, very personal, but let's just dive into it. He said, I was out for self. I was up for sale, but I couldn't tell. God made it rain, the devil made it hell. Dropped out of school, but I'm the one at Yale. Made the best tracks and still went off the rail. Now, I like, let me stop right there. It's this oxymoron thing that he's doing where he's kind of contradicting himself. God made it rain, the devil made it hell. Dropped out of school, but I'm the one at Yale. Made the best best tracks, but still went off the rail. It's cool. But it's like, get to the point. I mean, I like it, but it's just like, get to the point. So uh, to continue, had to go down, down, down. This the new town, town, town. This the new 10, 10, 10. I'm going in, in, in. Here I go on a new trip. Here I go acting too lit. Here I go acting too rich. Here I go with the new chick. 
And I know what the truth is still playing after two kids. It's a lot to digest when your life always moving. So basically it's like, Look, man, I'm I'm at the I'm past my peak at this point. I'm past my prime, but I'm still acting like that young, jerked out, ignorant kid. Like I don't have responsibilities. Like I don't have, you know, a life priorities, things to maintain. I'm still out here wilding, doing dumb shit, acting dumb, playing dumb, being dumb. When time is catching up with me, I'm I'm losing control of myself in the midst of all of this unprioritizing. And now I'm just trying to figure out, now I got to pick back up and now I got to catch up with myself, it seems like. I'm playing catch up, right? Architectural digest, but I needed home improvement. $60 million home, never went home to it. Genius gone clueless, it's a whole lot to risk. Alcohol anonymous, who's the busiest loser? So it's like, again, my life is catching up with me. Time is catching up with me. I'm making all of these, you know, investments that I never like go back in on and invest in. You know, I'm buying all, I'm blowing my money on useless things that I'd never use. If I'm constantly moving around, constantly doing this, constantly doing that, there's no stability. And now I'm starting to lose control of myself, right? Heated by the rumors, read into it too much. Fiending for some true love. Ask him, what do you love? Hard to find what the truth is, but the truth was that the truth suck. Always seemed to do stuff, but this time it was too much. So now all of the decisions that I've made in the past have caught up with me full circle. And now my life is starting to deteriorate. I'm losing the connections and relationships that I've made with people that I love and adore and care about. Everything is starting to fall apart. Everything is starting to fall apart. That's the reality. That is the harsh truth. Everything is starting to fall apart. Everybody's so judgmental. Everybody's so judgmental. Everybody hurts, but I don't judge rentals. I w- it was all so simple. So it's basically just like... No one's life is perfect, regardless of what you see on the outside, the exterior, no matter how much money I got, how much, you know, real estate I own, how many plaques and awards and records I've broken. No one's life is perfect. And eventually, if you're not careful, every mistake that you've made will catch up to you and knock you the fuck out. It will shatter your reality and you got to come face to face with it at some point and it hurts. It's devastating. It's it's completely, completely devastating. And but you just gotta face it. You gotta you gotta do what you have to do in that moment to make it better, right? And then we got the the outro chorus again. I see you in 3D. The dawn is bright for me. No more dark for me. I know you're watching me. 80 degrees burning up the leaves. Finally, I'm free. Finally, I'm free. As I go out to sea, I can walk on water. Won't you shine your lights? Demon stuck on my shoulder. Father, hold me close. Don't let me drown. I know you won't. God dig it, damn it. So overall, the song itself is just about self-awareness. You are shining the mirror, shining the light on yourself. Whether you're like The weekend and you realize that you have so much power, influence, ability, potential to be everything, you are everything and everything is you. You can make that connection with yourself and to the universe. Great. Whether you're like little Baby who can make the realization that your self-worth is so much more than what people are feeding you and what people are trying to make you think and what people are trying to get you to believe, you know your self-worth. You know how valuable you are. And if those people choose to take advantage of it or throw it away because of their own personal problems, then that's on them. It has nothing to do with you. You have no choice but to keep moving forward. Or if you go the Kanye West route and realize that the decisions that you've made in your past can eventually come back and bite you in the ass, then there's nothing left to do but to bite the bullet, swallow your pride, and admit that you've made mistakes. You can admit that you fucked up and you've done things that you're not proud of. And the only thing left to do is try to rebuild, recover, and come back up. Overall, it's... 
beautiful. It's a beautiful message overall, whether you take it from one of the three artists' perspectives. And I think that the way it sounds musically is rejuvenating. It's like taking a shower in a thunderstorm. Ironically, the song is called Hurricane, and that's what it feels like. It's not destructive or chaotic, but rather this, you know, insane, beautiful thing that is also just so dangerous. The reality of it is dangerous. The reality of it is frightening. Whether you look, whether, whatever the three perspectives that you're looking at, the reality of that is a dangerous, dangerous concept. Once you accept that and become one with it, then it becomes something more beautiful. And I can appreciate and I'm so glad that I caught the song on the radio when I did because I probably never would have stumbled upon it until I listened to this album. And by then, it probably would have been way too late. But that was Hurricane by Kanye West featuring The Weeknd and Lil Baby. It's off of the album Donda. I still have not heard that album yet, but I am working on it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Once again, I always, always, always appreciate the love and the support. And until next time, I will speak to you all later. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to the All Anal, All Anal, All Anal podcast with your host, Sebastian Starr.